Today's series, like many other genres, are quite diverse. Among them, there are those whose viewing can cause sadness and boredom, and there are those that can cause excitement and empathy. In any case, whatever you watch the result will be truly unpredictable. But despite the abundance of fans of this genre, new series constantly appear, surpassing the previous ones in quality and complexity of plots. Each released episode gives great pleasure and a storm of emotions. And this series will be no exception. The upcoming episode can easily amaze its viewers with incredible plot twists that will keep them in suspense until the very final frame. According to official sources, the new episode will be released in the very near future. The premiere show is scheduled for February 10th. Everyone expects the episode to have an intriguing storyline that successfully intertwines with the personal experiences of the characters. No doubt, any viewer hopes to get great pleasure from watching and succumb to the charms of the exciting plot. And the creative solutions of the creators of the project will diversify the viewer's experience as much as possible. All this will make you fall in love with this series. You won't have to wait long. And to brighten up our anticipation for the new episode, we offer a review of other excellent and not inferior in the Heat of Passion series. How I Met Your Mother is an American sitcom, created by Craig Thomas and Carter Bays for CBS. The series, which aired from 2005 to 2014, follows the main character, Ted Mosby, and his group of friends in New York City's Manhattan. The series was loosely inspired by Thomas and Bay's friendship when they both lived in New York. The vast majority of episodes were directed by Pamela Fryman, who directed 196 episodes out of 208. Known for its unique structure, humor, and incorporation of dramatic elements, How I Met Your Mother was popular throughout its run. It initially received positive reviews upon release, but reception became more mixed as the seasons went on. The show was nominated for 91 awards and received 21. In 2010, Alison Hannigan won the People's Choice Award for Favorite TV Comedy Actress. In 2012, seven years after its premiere, the series won the People's Choice Award for Favorite Network TV Comedy, and Neil Patrick Harris won the award for Favorite TV Comedy Actor twice. The series follows the adventures of Ted Mosby, played by Josh Radner, and his love life as a single man. His stories are narrated by Bob Saget as Ted Mosby 25 years later as he tells them to his adolescent children. The plot of the first episodes of the first season was very interesting. After his best friend Marshall proposes to his long-term girlfriend, Lily, Ted solicits help from his friend Barney to find the one for his life. He manages to get a date with Robin, a girl he met at his usual neighborhood bar, but threatens to scare Robin away when he accidentally reveals his love for her on the very first date. Meanwhile, Marshall accidentally hits Lily in the eye with the champagne stopper after they get engaged, forcing her to wear an eye patch. In an attempt to repair his situation with Robin, Ted instead pursues a casual relationship with her by inviting her to a series of parties. Marshall tries to write an important 25-page law paper, but Ted's parties and Lily's post-engagement desire distracts him. Meanwhile, Barney tries to end a relationship he unknowingly started. Ted agrees to let Barney disrupt his routine by taking an impromptu trip to the airport with him that eventually leads the duo to Philadelphia and trouble with airport security. Meanwhile, Lily and Robin go out for drinks, but Lily becomes jealous when she is not as successful with men as Robin is, for which she blames her engagement ring. Marshall travels between both situations in an attempt to rectify the group's problems. Establishment, Osman is a Turkish historical drama television series. It is a sequel to the popular multi-episode show Risen Ertegrel, which gained fans around the world and was one of the highest rated shows in Turkey. The actors of the series underwent special training for nine months. They learned how to ride a horse, wield a sword, practice swordplay, shoot an arrow, and learn martial choreography. Their military training took place in mountainous and forested areas, where they built their fortifications, sought water and prepared food. Audiences loved the beautiful sets, which look authentic, and the detailed costumes, which give a fairly accurate representation of the historical era. The story of the founder of the state, who became part of national legends, cannot turn out neutral. It will be fiery and memorable. For Turkish viewers there is nothing unnatural about this, but for those who watch the series in other countries it may seem a bit strange. The series is focuses on the life of Osman, the founder of the Ottoman Empire. 
The TV show includes Osman Ghazi's internal and external struggles and how he establishes and controls the Ottoman Empire. It portrays his struggles against Byzantium and the Mongol Ilkhanate and how he was able to secure independence from the Sultanate of Rum to establish a sovereign state that would stand up to the Byzantine and Mongol empires and would honor the Turks. The character of Osman faces many enemies and traitors in his quest and the show illustrates how he was able to overcome these obstacles and fulfill his mission with the help of his loyal companions, family, and friends. Once Upon a Time is an American fantasy adventure drama television series that aired for seven seasons on ABC from October 23, 2011 to May 18, 2018. The action alternates between two main settings, a fantastical world where fairy tales happen, and a fictional seaside town in Maine called Storybrook. The real-world part of the story unfolds with the characters of Emma Swan and her 10-year-old son, Henry Mills. Henry discovers the other people of the town are fairy tale characters. The audience is shown the backstory of the townspeople as fairy tale characters, in conjunction with their unfolding stories in the real world. Most of the show's characters are extracted from famous fairy tales of the brothers Grimm and Hans Christian Andersen, popular Western literature, folklore, Arthurian legend, and Greek mythology, as well as original Disney characters from the Walt Disney Company. The core themes of the show are hope and optimism. For the first six seasons, the series is set in the fictional seaside town of Storybrook, Maine, in which the residents are actually fairy tale characters that were transported to the real world town and robbed of their memories. Adam Horowitz and Edward Kitsis conceived the show in 2004 before joining the writing staff of Lost, but wanted to wait until that series was over to focus on this project. Eight years before the Once Upon a Time pilot, Kitsis and Horowitz became inspired to write fairy tales out of a love of mystery and excitement of exploring lots of different worlds. They presented the premise to networks, but were refused because of its fantastic nature. From their time on Lost, the writers learned to look at the story in a different way, namely that character has to trump mythology. Misfits is a British science fiction comedy drama television show, about a group of young offenders sentenced to work in a community service program, where they obtain supernatural powers after a strange electrical storm. The show premiered on November 12, 2009 and concluded on December 11, 2013 in its fifth season. The show is filmed in southeast London, mostly on location around the Southmere Lake in Thamesmead, including the signature shot of the four multi-story buildings from the roof of the Lakeside Centre and Bexley College. The first series was accompanied by an online viral marketing, on social networking websites such as Facebook and Twitter. For example, in a British first, the characters Simon and Kelly tweeted during the initial transmission of each episode, with the content of the tweets provided by writers Sam Leifer and Ben Edwards, under the direction of lead writer Howard Overman and executive producer Petra Fry. British reviews were positive. The Times gave it 4 out of 5 stars, calling it a new union, salty British street humor with whiz-bang special effects. The Irish media were also impressed with the show. The Evening Herald called the debut episode dark, hilarious, exciting and beautifully produced. Vikings is a historical drama television series created and written by Michael Hurst. Vikings is inspired by the sagas of Ragnar Lodbrok, a Viking who is one of the best-known legendary Norse heroes and notorious as the scourge of Anglo-Saxon England and West Francia. The show portrays Ragnar as a farmer who rises to fame by raiding England and eventually becomes the Scandinavian king, with the support of his family and fellow warriors. In the later seasons, the series follows the fortunes of his sons and their adventures in England, Scandinavia, the Mediterranean and North America. The series began filming in July 2012 at Ashford Studios in Ireland, which at the time was a newly built facility. This location was chosen for its scenery and tax advantages. The first episode received favorable reviews, with an average rating of 71% according to Metacritic. Many characters are based on real people from history or legend and the events portrayed are broadly drawn from history. The history of more than a century has been condensed, people who could never have met are shown as of similar age, with the history amended for dramatic effect. The main role is played by Travis Fimmel. The man at the time of filming the series was already 35 years, but before the series Vikings, he got only a minor minor role. He was better known as a model, 
because he did not see himself as the fearless leader of the harsh northerners. After the series, the actor became one of the most recognizable among contemporary celebrities. Black Mirror is a British anthology television series created by Charlie Brooker. Individual episodes explore a diversity of genres, but most are set in near-future dystopias utilizing a science fiction technology, a type of speculative fiction. The series is based on the Twilight Zone and uses technology to comment on contemporary social issues. As Black Mirror is an anthology series, each episode is standalone and can be watched in any order. The majority of episodes are set in dystopian near-futures with novel technologies that exaggerate a trait from contemporary culture, often the internet. Black Mirror can be seen to demonstrate a negative view of unending pursuit of scientific and technological advancement. The majority of episodes end unhappily. However, characters who carefully consider the risks of technology with which they engage are met with happy endings. The first episode received mostly positive critical reviews. Most reviewers found the episode plausible. Sims commented that every twist seems organic and every decision rational, leading the audience to overlook the insanity of the premise or any minor plot hole. The acting received a positive critical reception. Airing on December 4, 2011, the episode garnered 2.07 million viewers, according to seven-day figures from the broadcaster's audience research board. It was nominated for Best Single Drama at the 2013 Broadcast Awards. Supernatural is an American dark fantasy drama television series created by Eric Kripke. Starring Jared Padalecki as Sam Winchester and Jensen Ackles as Dean Winchester. Before bringing Supernatural to television, creator Eric Kripke had been developing the series for nearly 10 years, having been fascinated with urban legends since he was a child. He had originally envisioned Supernatural as a movie. During its first season, the show received generally mixed critical reception, but the reception from critics has grown more favorable as the series progressed with subsequent seasons receiving generally positive reviews from critics. Being a cult series, Supernatural has garnered a dedicated fanbase. The first season consists of 22 episodes. It premiered on the WB on September 13, 2005. The series follows the two brothers as they hunt demons, ghosts, monsters, and other supernatural beings. After their mother's death in a suspicious fire that burns down their house 22 years prior, Sam and Dean Winchester's father goes missing during a hunting trip. As a result, Dean tracks down Sam at Stanford University and they begin to live a life on the road, in Dean's black 1967 Chevrolet Impala with Kansas license plates. However, their father is not a typical hunter. He hunts supernatural creatures like ghosts, vampires, and spirits, and has trained his sons to do the same. Along the way, Sam and Dean save innocent people, fight creatures and ghosts, and collect clues to their father's whereabouts. Sam begins to mysteriously develop psychic abilities and visions as they travel. Magnificent Century is a Turkish historical fiction television series. It is based on the life of Ottoman Sultan Suleiman the Magnificent, the longest reigning Sultan of the Ottoman Empire, and his wife Hurrem Sultan, a slave girl who became the first Ottoman Hasiki Sultan. It also shines the light on the era known as the Sultanate of Women. The show generated controversy and complaints from some viewers, for what they referred to as a disrespectful, indecent and hedonistic portrayal of the historical Sultan. Turkey's radio and television Supreme Council, claimed they had received over 70,000 complaints about the show and warned Show TV to publicly apologize for wrongly exposing the privacy of a historical person. The Prime Minister Recep Tayyip Erdogan condemned the show as an effort to show our history in a negative light to the younger generations. An MP for the Governing Justice and Development Party, Oktay Saral, went further, threatening to outlaw the misrepresentation of historical figures. The series is popular in many countries around the world. In Greece, the series has become quite popular for people of all socio-economic backgrounds and ages. Many Greek viewers enjoyed the visuals and oriental decorations present in the show, as well as the cultural proximity and historical ties between the two countries. It has become so popular that Bishop Anthemos of Thessaloniki and the Golden Dawn Party condemned the show and urged Greeks not to watch it. In the Republic of North Macedonia, Turkish series have become so popular, 
that the Macedonian parliament has moved to ban Turkish soaps to reduce the Turkish impact on Macedonian society. Turkish series will gradually be removed and replaced by national programs, according to a 2012 bill. Better Call Saul is an American crime drama television series created by Vince Gilligan and Peter Gould. It is a spin-off, prequel, and a sequel to Gilligan's previous series, Breaking Bad. Set primarily in the early to middle part of the 2000s in Albuquerque, New Mexico, the series develops Jimmy McGill, an earnest lawyer and former con artist, into an egocentric criminal defense attorney known as Saul Goodman. Also shown is the moral decline of retired police officer Mike Ehrmantraut, who becomes closely affiliated with the Juarez drug cartel to support his granddaughter and her widowed mother. These two storylines are mostly told separately but do converge when Jimmy and Mike work together. At the start of the series, Jimmy struggles financially while working as a court-appointed lawyer. He lives in the back room of a nail salon which doubles as an office. Better Call Saul has received critical acclaim, with particular praise for its acting, characters, writing, direction, and cinematography, many critics have called it a worthy successor to Breaking Bad and one of the greatest television series of all time, with some deeming it superior to its predecessor. It has garnered many nominations. Vince Gilligan and Peter Gould began planning a television spin-off of Breaking Bad as early as 2009. Each episode's title sequence features a different low-quality image that recalls Saul Goodman's days on Breaking Bad. This includes the inflatable Statue of Liberty balloon that sat atop Saul's office, a drawer of burner phones kept in his desk, and a bench that advertised his business at a bus stop. Gould and Gilligan were inspired by the notoriously low production values of 1980s public access television, and from the fact that Saul Goodman's ads on Breaking Bad were done in the same style. They intended for the title sequences to appear purposefully awful in order to stand out from those of its contemporaries, which generally had increased visual quality and production standards. Some of the title sequences were put together from unused footage from Breaking Bad, but others were filmed specifically to create new ones. Better Call Saul has received critical acclaim and is considered to be an outstanding example of how to successfully produce a prequel and spin-off work that defies expectations. Many critics have called Better Call Saul a worthy successor to Breaking Bad and some have even deemed it superior to its predecessor. Endless Love is a Turkish drama series. The series has become a milestone in the international history of Turkish series, being awarded by the International Emmy Awards for Best Telenovela in 2017, becoming the first and only Turkish series to win this award. In addition, it has also been the only Turkish series to become a finalist in these awards. The novel has become the most watched Turkish series in the world, being broadcast in more than 110 countries with successful audiences and has been translated into more than 50 languages. In its broadcast in the United States through Univision, it became the most watched foreign soap opera in the entire history of the country and the Turkish series with the highest audience, surpassing its main competitors. The love story remains the most watched fiction in Hispanic prime time with more than 2 million viewers every day and close to 4 million in its final episode, something that no other series has achieved. Currently, Kara Sevda remains the most watched Turkish series in the United States. The first episode was a resounding success. The plot opened up an interesting story for the viewer. Kemal Soydera is the son of a middle-class family. In his last year in mining engineering, a girl named Nian enters his monotonous life. Love is impossible because of the class difference between them, but they manage to be together. That is until the day that Kemal has to move to a Zonguldak mine, unaware that Nian will be forced to marry Amir Koskoglu, a man in love with her since they were children. Kemal isolates himself at work, and one day, following his actions to help in an accident at the mine, Kemal is promoted and assumes a position of power in the company. Five years later, Kemal makes the decision to return to Istanbul to face his past. The Queen's Gambit is a 2020 American coming-of-age period drama streaming television miniseries based on the 1983 novel of the same name by Walter Tevis. The title refers to The Queen's Gambit, a chess opening. The series was written and directed by Scott Frank, who created it with Alan Scott, who owns the rights to the book. Beginning in the mid-1950s and proceeding into the 1960s, the story follows the life of Beth Harmon, 
a fictional chess prodigy on her rise to the top of the chess world while struggling with dependencies. Netflix released The Queen's Gambit on October 23, 2020. After four weeks it had become Netflix's most-watched scripted miniseries, making it Netflix's top program in 63 countries. The series received critical acclaim, with particular praise for Taylor Joy's performance, the cinematography, and production values. It also received a positive response from the chess community for its accurate depictions of high-level chess, and data suggests that it increased public interest in the game. The first episodes were immediately loved by millions of viewers. The plot was very intriguing. In 1950s Lexington, Kentucky, an eight-year-old Beth, having lost her mother in a car crash, is taken to an orphanage where she is taught chess by the building's custodian, Mr. Shabel. She quickly becomes a strong chess player due to her visualization skills. A few years later, Beth is adopted by childless suburban couple Alma and Alston Wheatley. As she adjusts to her new home, Beth enters a chess tournament and wins despite having no prior experience in competitive chess. Alma is initially resistant to Beth's interest in chess, but after Beth wins her first tournament, Alma is fully supportive of her adoptive daughter's sojourns to enter various chess competitions. With help from her oldest friend Jolene, whom she grew up with in the orphanage, she prepares for her biggest challenge yet, a major international chess tournament against the world's best players in Moscow. In October 2020, the series was the most watched show on Netflix in the United States. On November 23, 2020, Netflix announced that the series had been watched by 62 million households since its release. The series received praise from the chess community for its realistic portrayal of the game and players. Production designer Uli Hanisch developed the series sets to evoke the aesthetic of the 1950s and 1960s. Much of the series was filmed in Berlin because interiors found there could stand in for a large number of the show's locations, including Las Vegas, Cincinnati, Mexico City, Moscow, and Paris. The Mandalorian is an American space western television series created by Jon Favreau for the streaming service Disney+. It is the first live-action series in the Star Wars franchise, beginning five years after the events of Return of the Jedi. It stars Pedro Pascal as the title character, a lone bounty hunter who goes on the run after being hired to retrieve the child. Star Wars creator George Lucas had begun developing a live-action Star Wars television series by 2009, but this project was deemed too expensive to produce. He sold Lucasfilm to Disney in October 2012. Subsequently, work on a new Star Wars series began for Disney+. The Mandalorian premiered with the launch of Disney Plus on November 12, 2019. The eight-episode first season was met with positive reviews, was nominated for Outstanding Drama Series, and won seven Primetime Creative Arts Emmy Awards. And the first episode was just great. The episode stars Pedro Pascal as the Mandalorian, a lone bounty hunter who is given a mission by the mysterious client. The episode won two Primetime Emmy Awards. Five years after the fall of the Empire, Mandalorian bounty hunter collects a fugitive after a scuffle in a bar on the ice planet Pagadon and returns to the planet Navarro in his ship, the Razor Crest. He meets Grief Karga, the leader of the Bounty Hunters Guild, but he only offers low-paying bounties that will not cover travel expenses. Looking to get a bigger bounty, the Mandalorian accepts a mysterious commission for which Karga can only provide an address to meet the client who wants the details of the job to be private. The client, who uses Imperial Stormtroopers as bodyguards, gives the Mandalorian a vague target to bring back alive. The only information he is allowed to give is an age, 50 years old, and last known location. In exchange, the client promises to reward the bounty hunter with a container full of Besker, a rare metal used by Mandalorians to forge their armor. Receiving a single bar of Besker as a down payment, the Mandalorian meets with the armorer at an enclave housing fellow Mandalorians. The armorer, who melts the metal into a pauldron reserved for the Mandalorian, says the metal was gathered in the Great Purge and the excess will sponsor foundlings, as the Mandalorian once was. The nature of good and evil and the question of nature versus nurture is raised repeatedly throughout the Mandalorian. Forever is an American fantasy crime drama television series that aired on ABC. Created by Matt Miller, it centers on the character of Dr. Henry Morgan, an immortal New York City medical examiner who uses his extensive knowledge to assist the New York City Police Department in solving crimes and to discover a way to end his immortality. 
Flashbacks within each episode reveal various details of Henry's life. The concept for Forever came from a conversation between series creator Matt Miller and his son about death. After the conversation, Miller began to imagine what life would be like if a person was immortal but everyone else, including that person's own children, were mortals. He created a character who viewed immortality as a curse because of the pain of seeing family and friends die and who would attempt to find a way to end his immortality. That concept informed Miller's decision to make his character a doctor-turned-medical examiner who used his occupation for research into his immortality. Another series-long story arc explored how other people learned of Henry's immortality. The first storyline in the arc was the season's second story arc, Henry's determination to learn the identity of a second immortal who knows about it. The second immortal character's morals would contrast his protagonist's morals, serving as an antagonist for the main character. Beginning with the pilot, Miller structured each episode by telling two stories in the episode. The first was a traditional procedural plotline. The second story was a flashback from Henry's past. The Good Doctor is an American medical drama television series based on the 2013 South Korean series of the same name. Actor Daniel Day Kim, world famous for his role in the TV series Lost, noticed the original series and bought the rights for his production company. He began adapting the series and, in 2015, eventually shopped it to CBS Television Studios. CBS decided against creating a pilot. Because Kim felt so strongly about the series, he bought back the rights from CBS. Eventually, Sony Pictures Television and Kim worked out a deal and brought on David Shore, creator of the Fox Medical Drama House, to develop the series. In the first episode, on the way to begin his surgical residency at San Jose Hospital, Dr. Sean Murphy witnesses an airport sign fall and shatter glass onto a young boy. With his unique ability to visualize the internal body and using improvised methods and tools, Sean is able to stabilize the boy. In a hospital board meeting, Dr. Aaron Glassman, president of the hospital, tries to convince the board to hire Sean, despite his autism. Throughout the episode, flashbacks were shown, revealing the picture of Sean's childhood and his motivation for becoming a doctor. Heroes is an American superhero drama television series created by Tim Crane. The series tells the stories of ordinary people who discover that they have superhuman abilities and how these abilities take effect in the characters' lives as they work together to prevent catastrophic futures. The series emulates the aesthetic style and storytelling of American comic books, using multi-episode story arcs that build upon a larger, more encompassing narrative. Originally, Kring designed the series to have an ever-shifting cast. However, his motivation changed when he realized how popular the original cast was with audiences, therefore, he brought back most of the first season cast for the second season, with a few additions who received star billing. In its first season, the show features an ensemble cast of 12 main characters making it the third largest cast in American primetime television behind Desperate Housewives and Lost. The plot of Heroes is designed to be told in a way similar to the way comic books are told. Each season of Heroes contains one or two volumes. There are several main storylines in each volume. As the main plots develop, smaller, more intimate stories are told within them. Each main character's story is developed separately and as time passes their paths cross and it is explained how their stories are intertwined and connected. This is the story of ordinary people who discover extraordinary superpowers after a solar eclipse reveals them, and how these abilities affect the characters' daily lives. The first season, known as Volume 1, Genesis, begins with a seemingly ordinary group of people who gradually become aware that they have special abilities. The story develops showing their reactions to those powers, and how that discovery affects their personal and professional lives. At the same time, several ordinary individuals are investigating the origins and extent of those abilities. Mohinder Suresh, a research geneticist, continues his late father's research into the biological source of the powers, while Noah Bennett represents, and is a lead agent for, a secret organization known only as the company that wants to control, and if necessary, terminate those who are gifted. After only having a short time to come to terms with their new abilities, each of the heroes is drawn into the final showdown. Heroes include some mysterious fictional recurring elements that have been ascribed to science fiction or supernatural phenomena. Kring and the creators of the series referred to these fictional elements as part of the mythology of the series. Kring confirmed that although the show has a unique mythology, 
he did not want to sink too deeply into it. Rather, Crane used volumes to wrap up ongoing plot lines instead of carrying storylines over long periods of time as in Lost. Season 1 received highly positive reviews. During the season, the American Film Institute named Heroes one of the 10 best television programs of the year. The Office is an American sitcom television series. Based on the 2001-2003 BBC series of the same name created by Ricky Gervais and Stephen Merchant, it was adapted for American television by Greg Daniels. The Office was met with mixed reviews during its short first season, but the following seasons, particularly those featuring Carell, received significant acclaim from television critics as the show's characters, content, structure, and tone diverged considerably from the British version. This season introduced the main characters, and established the general plot, which revolves around Michael Scott, regional manager of the Scranton branch office, trying to convince the filmmakers of the documentary that he presides over a happy, well-running office. Meanwhile, sales rep Jim Halpert finds methods to undermine his cubemate, Dwight Schrute, receptionist Pam Beasley tries to deal with Michael's insensitivities and flubs, and temporary employee Ryan Howard is acting mostly as an observer of the insanity around him. The first episode received largely mixed reviews from critics. After the first episodes, critics thought The Office would be another failed remake of a British comedy. Despite these criticisms, the remainder of the season earned mostly positive reviews among critics. The filming process is organized in such a way that the series took the form of a kind of reality show. Most of the dialogues in which are built on improvisation, and the actors do not know where the camera is at the moment. The first season was filmed in a real office. During the second season, NBC moved filming to a special studio that replicated the setting of the first season, including plaques and testimonials hanging on the walls. A detailed script was written for each episode of the series, but the actors were always given the opportunity to improvise. In early episodes, the camera crews were limited primarily to office space, but as the show expanded, the characters' personal lives were included, and the cameras took on the ubiquitous, even haunting function of making a character's entire life available to the viewer. Cameras begin to accompany the heroes from the office and to their homes. Scrubs is an American medical comedy drama television series created by Bill Lawrence that aired from 2001 to 2010 on NBC and later ABC. The series follows the lives of employees at the fictional Sacred Heart Hospital, which is a teaching hospital. The title is a play on surgical scrubs and a term for a low-ranking person because at the beginning of the series, most of the main characters are medical interns. The series was noted for its fast-paced slapstick and surreal vignettes presented mostly as the daydreams of the central character, John Dorian, played by Zach Braff. The main cast for all but its last season consisted of Braff, Sarah Chulke, Donald Faison, Neil Flynn, Ken Jenkins, John C. McGinley, and Judy Reyes. Scrubs focuses on the unique point of view of its main character and narrator, Dr. John Michael Dorian for the first eight seasons, with season nine being narrated by the new main character Lucy Bennett. Most episodes feature multiple storylines thematically linked by voiceovers done by Braff, as well as the comical daydreams of J.D. Almost every episode title for the first eight seasons begins with the word my. Bill Lawrence says this is because each episode is Dr. John Dorian writing in his diary. For the first eight seasons, the series featured seven main cast members, with numerous other characters recurring throughout the course of the series. Starting with the ninth season, many of the original cast left as regular characters, while four new additions were made to the main cast. The first season introduces John Michael Dorian and his best friend Christopher Turk in their first year out of medical school as interns at Sacred Heart Hospital. JD meets his reluctant mentor Perry Cox, an attractive female intern named Elliot, on whom he develops a crush. The hospital's janitor, who goes out of his way to make JD's life difficult. Chief of Medicine Dr. Bob Kelso, who is more concerned about the budget than the patients. And Carla Espinoza, the head nurse who eventually becomes Turk's girlfriend. The characters face romance and relationship issues, family obligations, overwhelming paperwork, long shifts, dealing with death of patients, and conflicting pressures from senior doctors. Fargo is an American black comedy crime drama television series created and primarily written by Noah Hawley. 
The show is inspired by the 1996 film of the same name, which was written and directed by the Cone brothers, and takes place within the same fictional universe. The Cones were impressed by Holly's script and agreed to be named as executive producers. The series premiered on April 15, 2014. Each season is heavily influenced by various Cone Brothers films, with each containing numerous references to them. The first season, set primarily in Minnesota and North Dakota from January 2006 to February 2007 and starring Billy Bob Thornton, Allison Tolman, Colin Hanks, and Martin Freeman, received wide acclaim from critics. It won the Primetime Emmy Awards for Outstanding Miniseries, Outstanding Directing, and Outstanding Casting, and received 15 additional nominations including Outstanding Writing, another Outstanding Directing nomination, and Acting nominations for all four leads. In 1997, a pilot was filmed for an intended television series based on the film. Filming of the first season began in Calgary, Alberta, in late 2013 and concluded in 2014. The first season garnered eight Primetime Emmy Award nominations. The first season of Fargo received critical acclaim. It currently holds a Metacritic score of 85 out of 100 based on 40 reviews, indicating universal acclaim. Good Omens is a fantasy comedy series created and written by Neil Gaiman, based on his and Terry Pratchett's 1990 novel of the same name. Michael Sheen and David Tennant lead a large ensemble cast as Aziraphale and Crowley respectively, an angel and a demon. Set in 2018, the series follows the demon Crowley and the angel Aziraphale, long-time acquaintances who, having grown accustomed to life on Earth as representatives of heaven and hell, seek to prevent the coming of the Antichrist and with it Armageddon, the final battle between heaven and hell. Pratchett and Gaiman had planned to adapt Good Omens as a movie for years, with various directors and writers attached to the project along the way. In 2011, a television series, written by Terry Jones and Gavin Scott, was first reported to be in the works but no further plans were announced. After Pratchett's death, Gaiman refused to ever consider working on the adaptation alone but changed his mind when he received a letter from Pratchett, written to be sent after his death, urging him to finish the project. The first episode was very interesting to many viewers. The angel Aziraphale and demon Crowley meet for the first time at the Garden of Eden as Adam and Eve are expelled after Crowley tempts them with an apple. Fast forward 11 years before Armageddon. Crowley delivers the Antichrist to a satanic convent, where the baby is to be given to an American diplomat and his family. However, a mix-up occurs and the Antichrist ends up with a middle-class English family, the Youngs. Crowley and Aziraphale meet to discuss the coming apocalypse. Aziraphale reluctantly agrees to work with Crowley. They decide that if each works to influence the boy warlock, whom they believe to be the Antichrist, he will be neither good nor evil, just normal. In the present day, Crowley and Aziraphale attend his 11th birthday party, but realize they have the wrong boy when the Hellhound fails to appear. Meanwhile, the Hellhound has found his master, Adam Young. Adam names him Dog, which changes him into a small terrier, unknowingly initiating Armageddon. Lie to Me is an American crime drama television series. In the show, Dr. Cal Lightman and his colleagues in the Lightman Group accept assignments from third parties, commonly local and federal law enforcement, and assist in investigations, reaching the truth through applied psychology. The show received mostly positive reviews from television critics. Tim Roth as Dr. Cal Lightman, a brilliant expert in the science of body language, especially microexpressions, and founder of the Lightman Group, a private company that operates as an independent contractor to assist investigations of local and federal law enforcement through applied psychology. Though often confronted by people's skepticism, Lightman uses any technique he deems necessary to reach the truth, however elaborate or confronting. He is divorced and shares custody of his teenage daughter. He cares deeply about his colleague Gillian Foster. Season 1 opens with Cal and Gillian hiring a new associate, TSA officer Ria Torres, who scored extraordinarily high on Cal's deception detection diagnostic, and is in turn labeled a natural at deception detection. Her innate talent in the field clashes with Cal's academic approach, and he often shows off by rapidly analyzing her every facial expression. She counters by reading Lightman and, when he least expects it, peppers conversations with quotes from his books.
Broad Sick is a British comedy drama television series which premiered on Sky One on August 22, 2019 and became Sky's most successful comedy in seven years. The series follows the lives of Vinnie O'Neill and his friends in the fictional town of Holly. The first series consists of six episodes, which concluded on September 19, 2019, receiving positive reviews. Bras Sick follows the lives of Vinny and his five friends as they live their lives in the fictional northern English town of Holly. The working class group commit various crimes to keep money in their pockets, but as they get older some of them wonder if there's more to life away from the town. Lucy Mangan of The Guardian, reviewing the series, gave it 4 out of 5 stars, saying, it is a hilarious, warm, brutal melange that works because it has heart without sentimentality and authenticity without strain. Creator and lead actor Joseph Gilgan has been praised for his performance as Vinnie O'Neill, with review aggregator website Rotten Tomatoes commenting, Joseph Gilgan is wonderfully expressive as Vinnie, his volatile features continually scrunching together and apart like the top of a drawstring bag. The Witcher is a Polish-American fantasy drama television series created by Lauren Schmidt Hisrich, based on the book series of the same name. Set on a fictional, medieval-inspired landmass known as the Continent, The Witcher explores the legend of Geralt of Rivia and Princess Ciri, who are linked to each other by destiny. It stars Henry Cavill, Freya Allen and Anya Kalatra. The story begins with Geralt of Rivia, crowned Princess Ciri of Sintra, and the sorceress Yennefer of Vengeberg at different points of time, exploring formative events that shaped their characters throughout first season, before eventually merging into a single timeline. Geralt and Ciri are linked by destiny since before she was born when he unknowingly demanded her as a reward for his services by invoking the Law of Surprise. After the two finally meet, the Witcher becomes the princess's protector and must help her and fight against her various pursuers to prevent her elder blood and powerful magic from being used for malevolent purposes and keep Ciri and their world safe. Sonia Belusova and Giona Ostinelli composed the soundtrack for the first season. The duo collaborated with several soloists and artists, the soundtrack features many medieval instruments to match the medieval-inspired setting of the series. More of 60 different instruments from around the world were used to create the soundtrack. In an interview, the author of the Witcher novels admitted that he was disappointed in the series and considered the series to be only a mediocre adaptation of his books that had little in common with them. But in the same interview he noted another important aspect, saying that the creators of the series are entitled to their own vision of the story they invented. Legacies is an American fantasy drama television series, created by Julie Pleck, that premiered on October 25, 2018. Legacies follows Hope Michelson, the daughter of Klaus Michelson and Haley Marshall, who is descended from some of the most powerful vampire, werewolf, and witch bloodlines. 17-year-old Hope attends the Salvatore School for the Young and Gifted. The school provides a haven where supernatural beings can learn to control their abilities and impulses. The first episode introduces the viewer to an interesting plot. Hope Michelson, a student at the Salvatore School for the Young and Gifted, assists her headmaster, Alaric Saltzman, in recruiting werewolf, Raphael, to the school. In the process, Hope runs into her old friend Landon, who is also Raphael's foster brother, but since the school for the supernatural is deemed to be too dangerous for humans, Landon is turned away. When vampire student, M.G., fails to compel Landon to forget his knowledge of the supernatural, it is assumed Landon has ingested vervain. Landon is locked up in a cell until it can clear his system. Hope visits Landon in his cell while Alaric's daughters Josie and Lizzie give Raphael a tour of the school. Hope tells Landon the truth about her supernatural origins. Knowing his memory will be erased, Landon kisses her. After Landon leaves, it is revealed the compulsions have still not worked and he stole a knife from the school before he left. Hope enlists Josie to help her locate the knife and Landon. Landon's bus explodes and as Sheriff Matt Donovan evaluates the crime scene, Alaric deduces it was Landon, who is missing, must be some kind of supernatural being. Hope vows to track him down. Shameless is an American comedy drama television series developed by John Wells that aired on Showtime from 2011 to 2021. It is an adaptation of Paul Abbott's British series of the same name and features an ensemble cast led by William H., Macy and Emmy Rossum. The show is set on the south side of Chicago, Illinois. 
With the premiere of the ninth season on September 9, 2018, Shameless became the longest-running original scripted series in Showtime's history. The series depicts the poor, dysfunctional family of Frank Gallagher, a neglectful single father of six. Fiona, Philip, Ian, Debbie, Carl, and Liam. He spends his days drunk or in search of misadventures, and his children learn to take care of themselves. The show's producers sought to distinguish this production from previous American working-class shows by highlighting how Frank's alcoholism and drug addiction affect his family. Shameless was adapted from a long-running, award-winning British television comedy drama of the same name. Most episodes begin with one of the main characters who breaks the fourth wall to berate the viewer about missing previous episodes. Then the show cuts to a recap montage of plot points relevant to the current episode, followed by the opening title sequence. The series is mostly filmed at a Los Angeles studio with some scenes filmed in Chicago. Shameless premiered on January 9, 2011, in the United States, becoming Showtime's highest-rated series debut on record across the network's target demographic. The first episode of the series generated 982,000 unique viewers, and was Showtime's largest audience for a series premiere since Dead Like Me in 2003. The fourth episode, posted 1.45 million total viewers. Shameless was the cable channel's best-performing first-year drama. Defying the usual downward trend following a premiere, the series built on its initial audience, becoming number one in its time slot among adults aged 18 through 49. Subsequent episodes' audiences fluctuated between a million and 1.14 million viewers. The March 27, 2011 season finale drew an audience of 1.157 million. The third season's premiere episode drew 2 million viewers, becoming the show's highest-rated episode to date. It has since maintained average ratings of just below a million viewers throughout the remainder of its episodes. Tim Goodman of The Hollywood Reporter said that Shameless is excellent, compelling television from the first moment. As long as it stays true to the roots of the original, it's going to be essential viewing. Dot.